Learning fundamental writing and math skills doesn't have to be boring. Introducing the My First Augmented Reality Workbook series from Teacher Goals and Quiver Vision. With the Quiver app, students unlock interactive experiences that teach path of motion, phonics, writing, and more. This is perfect for schools that are one-to-one -one or have tablet stations set up for students to learn. Our augmented reality workbooks are changing the way kids learn, read, and develop literacy skills. They'll love the interactive experiences and you'll love the results. Email us today about bulk purchases for your classroom, school, or district. Contact at teachergoals.com. My first augmented reality workbook series, unlocking the power of learning. This is your host, Erica Terry. So excited to see you guys tonight. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and start putting in the chat where you're from, your role in education, as well as your summer break plans. I want to hear about the beaches and the good weather and everything you got planned for this summer. So go ahead and put that in the chat. I am so excited about our interview tonight. We are going to be talking about social emotional learning and how to teach those skills using animation and technology. And we have the wonderful Trisha Fugelstad, uh, who is the author of Peter O'Meter. And we're gonna hear all about how she is incorporating these skills um, in her classroom, and her book. So we have a lot to cover tonight. Um, I am so excited that you all are here and hanging out with us tonight. Um, special shout out to Tania from South Texas. Um, con uh, excited to continue learning during my summer break. I love that. That is awesome. And she has the Peter O. Meter symbols that I've been seeing around. So that is great. Uh, shout out to Amanda Fox, who's excited to hear Trisha share as I am as well. And I know that it is summertime. So we are going to jump right in um, right now. So let's get started. Trisha, hey. how are you? I'm good. Yay. I'm so glad to be here. And I am so glad to have you. Big plans for the summer. What you got going on? Oh, I'm writing a book and making it come true. My dream is coming true this summer. So I don't know about the beach, but I, I don't know. Outer space, maybe? Yes, <laughs> living the dream, living the dream, making the dream reality. That is what summers are for for educators, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So we are super excited to have you here. And we're going to jump right in um, with my first question, which is all about how did you get to the place where you are now spending your summer about to make your dream reality, working on this book, like kind of just share your story with us about, you know, where you got started and how did you get to where you are today? Okay. Um, <laughs> so this is, I, I love show and tell, so this is fun. Um, I'm a national board certified art teacher and um, I have a master's in technology integration and 30 years of elementary art 
teaching experience. Oh, wow. So, um, you know, and over the years, like we've explored so many different things with my students. We were really big into movie making. We did fugal flicks. You know, everything's something to do with my last name, Fugelstad. So fugal flicks were student-created, art-related movies made by kids for kids that taught art concepts. And those were a really big hit. And they, like, screened at international film festivals and kids won awards nationally. And even an ISTE award, which was super exciting. Wow. They flew us to um, Philadelphia one year to accept it. And, um, and through the process, I, you know, started to realize that, well, I guess I should back up a little bit. I, you know, with 30 years of teaching experience, I was not trained in technology. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and here is an example of what I mean, because I, I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, how do I really explain how much I did not know technology? And here it is. When I wanted to make a handout for my students when I started teaching, I literally had to do this. I um, would draw uh, a picture on paper in black marker. Then I would type in word processing what my words were going to be. And I printed that if I had a printer. You know, that was a big deal. Right. And then I cut, literally cut and paste the two things together and ran it through the Xerox machine. That is how I did a handout. And I was like, wow, these Xerox machines are so great. I love Xerox machines because I had Mimeo machines when I was in grade school. So, I mean, this was big time because you could zoom in on a Xerox machine and you can shrink. I mean, that was awesome. So what happened with me is that I wanted technology to when I saw that it could improve my instruction or um, the, the hope was that it could improve art production and that my students would be able to use technology for creativity. But that just felt like a, a, you know, a light years away from where we were when we were just celebrating the Xerox machine. Okay. But we did, we, we did find ways to celebrate the Xerox machine and art. <laughs> there were ways to do it. But um, so every time I learned about a new technology, I begged and pleaded and said, can I pilot something for the art room and tried to pull it in or write a grant to get it. I was the first classroom in my building to have a projector. Oh, wow. Because um, we, they put a computer in my room. They're like, we don't know where to store this. Can we store it here? And I'm like, oh, but if it works, I'd like to use it. <laughs> <laughs> And so I tried to figure out how to use a computer. And then I'm like, hold it, I'm seeing some really cool things here. It'd be great if my students could see it too. And the concept of a projector was brand new. And so I wrote a grant, got a projector, and then the following year, the whole rest of the building got projectors. And it kind of went that way for my whole career. I started to just try to figure out what can we do to make learning more engaging for my students and mm -hmm. how can I pull in those resources? So eventually, I'm getting to the how this all <laughs> works, but eventually, I um, like somewhere around 2000. 11 or 12 iPads. I don't exactly know when they came out. Schools are always behind, so they <laughs> came out before that. Right. But I started to see an iPad and how where you touch it, you can draw. And it, it was intuitive. Where we were trying to draw on laptops with trackpads and the hand-eye coordination was really difficult to teach my students. And we were frustrated because it took 10 minutes to boot up a laptop anyway in the art room. And when you only have four or five minutes to work, it was just really clunky. But the iPads made a difference because even the littlest ones could put their finger on the screen and draw. Mm -hmm. And back then, that was so revolutionary that I was like, okay, I'm hooked. We need to get these iPads in the art room. And we can finally use technology for creation. And so that was the beginning of where we are now. Now I'm designing lessons that um, 
integrate technology seamlessly and meaningfully into our art lessons and incorporating other concepts like social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This is amazing. And I'm laughing because um, me and my daughter have been binging on a Disney show called Intertwine and they like go back like travel to through time basically so one of the characters didn't know what email was and i told my daughter like well you know i didn't have email when i was growing up like i remember getting an email address in college and she looked at me like wait what like <laughs> i know I, it's really amazing to think about how much has changed and rotary phones and <laughs> and you had to be there when somebody called at your house and you got busy signals and all these things that the kids nowadays have no clue. Yes, take for granted. And so super excited tonight. We are going to kind of journey through time and talk about how um, you are now, you know, going from drawing using black marker on a piece of paper to actually integrating animation and technology um, as you teach art and social emotional learning. And so let's kind of just jump in. Um, I know that, you know, we started it off. You're living a dream, working on a book, Peter O'Meter. And you share so much on social media about how, you know, you are using this with your book. And so let's kind of just start there. Like, tell us a little bit, um, give us a snapshot about the book and how it differs from other books that may be out there. Okay. So um, Peter Meter is based on my emotional robot series. So you can see if you're listening, I'm sorry, you can't see, but in the back of my room here, you can see a couple of robots on the wall. So as an art teacher, I'm making art all the time with my students, but when I need to calm myself down, when I'm full of emotion, I find that you know, creating is really a wonderful outlet and it's very calming for me. Mm -hmm. So it was winter break a couple of years ago and I, you know, there was a lot of political unrest. There was just oh so much going on, all the changes with the pandemic and just my stress level was really high. So I said, okay, I'm going to paint. And what came out of me were six robots that each express a different emotion. And I you know, named them all. And then I decided that, well, I would photograph them and animate them so that the expression on their face would come to life and be more expressive and further express their emotions. And that idea was then hooked up with augmented reality. So if you were to go to my Instagram, one of my pinned posts has the robots coming to life right off the walls from this room and um, coming to life with augmented reality. So the idea of this is something that I've been working on for a long time and I've been integrating this with my students when we do our art projects. We call it transdigital art. When you make art and then you make it move. Transdigital in that you have to experience both the physical and the digital to have the full experience. And so to showcase that, augmented reality is perfect because you know it's bringing an extra digital layer to your physical environment. So a lot of our lessons were um, transdigital and then this was just gonna be my example for another lesson. But the opportunity to meet with Amanda Fox, who I, I see that you're here, so hey, thank you, um, for giving me this opportunity to um, pitch a book idea for an augmented reality story, a story that is two-dimensional that has a three-dimensional, or not three-dimensional, um, an augmented reality element where it comes to life right off the page. And so this wasn't my original pitch. My original pitch was the Snow Flurry Fairy. And then they looked over my shoulder during the Zoom meeting and said, tell us about those robots. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And they're like, I think there's a story there. So a couple of weeks later, I came back and I'm like, okay, how about this story? 
<laughs> and um, so I signed a, a book contract, and that was the beginning of Peter O'Meter. And so Peter O'Meter is a robot who becomes emotional when his buttons are pushed. He has a newly upgraded emotion panel, and it's not fully calibrated. So he gets into a situation, which he does throughout the book, and he notices that he has physical responses to the environment, to what's happening. Like maybe his gear starts spinning or he needs to let off steam or, um, you know, so all these physical things might be happening and it's signaling that there's an emotion button that he needs to push, but he asks the reader, you read your reader, um, it's Peter. I need your advice, which button should I push on my emotion device? And that's the moment that the reader is needing to stop and think, okay, what clues here um, will help me identify what feeling Peter might be having? So we're working on empathy. We're working on um, identifying emotion and looking for signals like body language and other things that are happening in the story. But the cool thing that adds an extra element of wow to this story is that the augmented reality is powered by quiver vision and quiver vision is known for making augmented reality coloring pages that come to life as 3d models so they right now are working on the 3d model for peter or meter so when that interactive experience happens the kids will be able to scan that page and pull up a 3D model of Peter and see his buttons and click through and choose the emotion. So that's just one cool thing and then there's more because the pages, the flat pages will also have augmented reality too. (laughs) It's just gonna be goodness on top of goodness and so amazing yes it sounds like it and so um speaking of goodness on top of goodness we all here have experienced students that sound very much like peter o'meter to me right as i heard you i'm talking about you know he gets emotional when his buttons get pushed We all have those students that get emotional when their buttons get pushed. So can you give us some tips or strategies that teachers who may be dealing with this very issue that Peter O'Meter is displaying in their classroom can use to help their students? So it's funny that you say this because like something that I've noticed trending on TikTok right now is called hashtag recess drama. And recess drama has been something as the art teacher in elementary school, I'm already dealing with lots of super excited children. Like that's just the thing. Like kids will come to school no matter what, when it's the day that they get art. They love it. They are just bursting when they come in my room. They're skipping. They're, you know, just so excited. And so I spend a lot of time just trying to calm them down and get them so they could focus and listen. But it's worse when they've come straight from recess because they're bringing in all their recess drama with them. Sometimes it's they're just excited because they had so much fun at recess, but sometimes they had a conflict at recess that they didn't resolve and they're bringing it in with them and they can't focus until that conflict is resolved and they need strategies to figure it out. So social emotional learning is all about um, these kinds of things. It's about teaching kids how to manage their emotions and make good choices and get along and problem solve, share and take turns, be aware of their feelings, et cetera. Oh, there's so many things and how to be a good right. friend and make smart choices. So with all those things in mind, this um, book that the Peter O'Meter will have a section in there to deal with recess drama. <laughs> it literally is a when I was writing it, I'm like, I gotta have something in there that addresses recess drama and how to transition from recess to being ready to learn. 
So, you know, Peter goes through six ways. You have to read the book to know, though. Six ways to unwind. Yes. Wow. All right. And so can you give us a sneak peek into like one of the ways <laughs> to unwind? Yes. Um, one way to unwind is to, um, let's see, I have six to choose from, I think. Um, one way is to quiet yourself down and read. That was one. But um, in my illustrations, I, um, sometimes I, oh, did I mention that I'm the illustrator? Yeah, I don't know if I clearly mentioned that, but I'm, so I wrote the book, I'm illustrating it, and I'm also animating it. So in the illustrations, um, when Peter is reading a book, he is reading a book called Artie Bot Draws a Lot, which is like a little sneak peek into the future, because yeah. I'm, Amanda Fox wrote that story, and that is next in line for me to illustrate, hopefully. And um, so he, of course, is interested in robot stories. So he's reading that. Mm. So, yes. Yeah. So when we think about, like, how um, teachers can take these same principles and, you know, incorporate them into their classroom. Like, do you have any strategies that you've been using in your art classroom or that you've helped other teachers to use um, where they can use technology or animation or a combination of it all in order to teach some social emotional learning? Yes. So um, I think um, I'll give you an example of one of my lessons and you'll see how it's all integrated seamlessly and it all makes sense. So the idea of integrating social emotional learning and technology into art is all just what am I wanting to teach in the first place? And then where does it naturally fit in? Because I, you know, it just needs to make sense. Otherwise it's not worth it. Right. Right. And so I, um, I like to use children's books as a springboard for my lessons. And so one book in particular struck me as um, a wonderful book to make art from, and it's called The Color Monster. The Color Monster is a story about a monster who is all tangled up with emotions. And as they work through his emotions, they're pulling out different colors and they're name naming the colors and they're naming the emotion that it matches. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. students created color monsters and they picked one color, one emotion, and they focused on, uh, it was a monochromatic painting. So that's one of the art concepts I wanted to teach. It had visual texture because it was a monster. They did tints and shades because that's an important concept to teach at, it, within a monochromatic palette. And then they focused on the face to show expression. What can we do to make this monster have, for example, the look of fear? And so what color will go with fear? What expression on its face will go with fear? And then when we were done uh, making the monster, which was made out of cardboard with movable arms and legs, then we worked together collaboratively in groups to create a stop motion animation of that monster to act out fear through stop motion animation. Okay. And while working collaboratively, the students had to use their social emotional learning skills. For example, they needed to communicate clearly, they needed to cooperate, they needed to get along and try to work together to make this movie. So nice. I assigned roles so that they could have some tools to communicate. So like there would be a director, a photographer, and then animators. And then they would make that movie together and listen to each other and, and, um, and found success. It was wonderful. And then they'd switch and, and switch roles and build the next movie for the next student. So these little animated pieces and the color monster. So we have a physical piece of art and a digital piece of art put together mm -hmm. with augmented reality. And so we've learned technology, social emotional learning and art concepts and it all made sense. And so that's just one example mm -hmm. and actually talk about this particular lesson in my 
um, session coming up with the Teach Your Heart Out virtual conference this summer. You're in that too, aren't you? I am. Hey. <laughs> I've got my week of AI shirt on. So. <laughs> so. The presentation, Austin. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're filming today? Or yeah. <laughs> never mind. We won't talk about it. <laughs> um, so, I thought you were just advertising. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so speaking of the Teach Your Heart Out um, conference, it's a virtual conference, and I have a giveaway that I want to announce right now. So this giveaway is for a free ticket to this conference. So this conference has like 40 presenters and three keynotes, and you get all these um, professional development hours for attending. Plus you get two books, which the cost of if you were just going to buy the book is almost the entire $80. But um, then there was a, Oh, you get time. You can, it's virtual. So you can just at your own pace, um, go ahead and soak in all that goodness and get your ideas together. So how to enter this contest, you can um, do the get on my <laughs> what am I calling it? My I can't wait list. That's it. If you <laughs> enter, you can enter the giveaway by joining the I can't wait list, which is bitly excited about Peter. So the I can't wait list is just an email list so that you can know about when Peter's available. And I'll see those people show up on my list and I'm going to pick a winner on Monday. So people on the replays get a chance to enter too. So anyway, the, um, in the Teach Your Heart Out presentation, I'm going to be talking about a whole bunch of lessons that start with children's books and integrate um, technology and animation. And many of them integrate social emotional learning as well. Oh, awesome. So, yes, go ahead and make sure that you go to bit.ly slash excited about Peter to enter the giveaway for the free ticket. And then for those of you that are interested in grabbing maybe extra tickets or um, want your own ticket, you can use the link teachergoals.com slash virtual dash conference and you will be able to get your ticket there. And like Trisha said, it is going to be an amazing event. Over 40 presenters. I am uh, recording today. <laughs> yes, so I will be presenting as well all about co-teaching and how to um, successfully teach in sync. Like, so yeah, we got some in sync inspiration going on, a whole lot of fun. And I would love to see you there. So once again, make sure you grab your ticket at teachergoals.com slash virtual dash conference and also be sure to enter the giveaway at bit.ly slash excited about peter because we are excited about peter and also excited about integrating technology and animation into our classes to teach social emotional skills and so any final words of wisdom for someone that have been listening or you know that are that's on with us tonight and they're like i want to incorporate more technology animation into my classes help my students to develop these social emotional skills that we know are so important what's one action that they can like implement and i would say tomorrow but it is summer break so let's say <laughs> like the first day of school <laughs> Okay, so I was thinking about this. I think that the one thing that you can do, and especially since it's summer, is just start to create. When you create and make something, then it's like you've planted a seed, and then that will grow and take root, and then you're going to find that you're going to want to 
create with your students. And when you create with your students, it's sort of like if you give a mouse a cookie kind of thing. So if you start by creating, then you're going to want to create with your students. And then once you create with your students, you're going to want to figure out how to do more cool things like integrate technology, then do more cool things like use animation, then do more cool things like hook it up with augmented reality and do more cool things like get the Peter Meter book and have an awesome augmented reality, social emotional learning fun time. Yes. So that's my advice. Just create and have fun. I love it. Create and have fun. And so people that want to continue this conversation and have fun with you, tell us where can they find you? Oh, I'm on social media. So you can find me on Twitter at Trisha Fugelstad. And you can find me on Instagram at Fugelfun. And yes. Other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, plenty of fun. So excited um, about your upcoming book. Loved having this opportunity to chat with you tonight. Um, and I'm super excited about being able to see your presentation and learn and get all of the great recommendations on how to incorporate uh, animation and technology and it sounds like children's books as well yeah. um, to, to, yeah, to teach social emotional learning. So that sounds so fun and exciting. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. Yes. And I just realized that I forgot to give my spiel at the very beginning of the episode to let people know that um, you're going to stay on and answer any questions that anyone might have. And so typically <laughs> I say that at the beginning so that questions are coming through. But if you have a question for Tricia, now is the time to go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, and so she will stay on for a few minutes to um, answer that. Um, answer any questions that you have. And in the meantime, just want to make sure that you follow her on Instagram at Fugo Fun, and then also join the giveaway, which I know I have right there. So Thanks. once again, she's giving away a free ticket to the Teach Your Heart Out and Teacher Goals Sharpen Your Skills virtual conference. Um, and you can get that or enter to win at bit.ly slash excited about Peter. And with the bit.ly links, do they have to do, they do have to do all caps, right? Is that uh, They do have to pay attention to yeah. the, yeah, the case. So it's lowercase excited about all caps, Peter. That was a good point because if you're listening to the podcast, you wouldn't know. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's why I wanted to make sure uh, that we clear that up. And so, yes, it seems like so many people are excited about Peter O'Meter. Um, I know I am excited to see how you are integrating that AI, um, that animation into it. Amanda says, Artie Bot can't wait. Uh, definitely couldn't have a better uh, person illustrating. And so great feedback tonight. I love the spirit. Great job. Uh, Michelle says, thanks so much. And so we truly appreciate all of you um, for hanging out with us. And Tricia, we definitely appreciate you for being here with us tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for having me. And I, I guess, um, so you're going to be filming tonight, so, you know. Maybe. <laughs> and uh, so we are laughing guys because the presentation is due today and uh you see your girl is on here like just put on the shirt i said let me comb my hair um I'm like i, I don't even know how you could do this when you have that to do too i'm like oh my gosh they just yeah. realized it today. So that's why we are laughing because I think it was 6 38 uh, when I finished my last slide. Um, so, yeah, uh, yes, yes. But hey, um, 
hey, it's, you know, we, we got to make it do what it do, right? Yeah. We, we make it happen. Uh, and so we do have a LinkedIn user that says, um, you made a huge jump from just having iPads uh, to now using animation. Like, how did you learn how to use animation? That's such a great question. That is a great question. Yes. And I think the the easiest way to answer it is the Do Ink animation app and their green screen app. They made this really user-friendly, child-friendly app. And so I remember when um, iPads first came out, everybody was like, what apps do you use? What apps do you use? And what ended up happening, I mean, first you play with everything, right? And then you find out what just makes sense and what and then you start building your lessons to use those apps because that is your tool now. So the Do Ink animation and drawing app and the Do Ink green screen app were so simple and powerful that everything I wanted to create, I could pretty much do it in those apps. So, um, and also it's a great little company. They're um, in Boston and they're super supportive of educators and they're really responsive. They've grown and changed their app according to the needs that classroom teachers have had. So it's not a huge, as not as huge of a jump as you would think. And um, I talk about my aha. Can I share my aha moment? The yes. moment, okay. the moment when it all started to make sense to me how to integrate in a meaningful way the technology that was available in the iPads was when my students were working on a really simple little landscape. They were doing, um, I wanted them to just learn foreground, middle ground, and background, and overlapping. So it was Halloween time, so we just made it a spooky landscape. And so they had, like a ghost was gonna go in the foreground, and then they were gonna have like the haunted house and then a moon in the background. And so we had these layers in our landscape and then it dawned on me that what if we just don't make the ghost? We do the house and the sky and the overlapping moon, but then we skip the ghost for now, take a photo of their finished painting, and then animate a ghost in front of the haunted house. And then what if we make that ghost slightly, you know, semi-transparent? And what if that ghost gets an animated path. And what if that animated path has rotation? I mean, think of all the new things I could teach my students, I, not just overlapping anymore. I mean, it, it was layered on with so many other skills. Right. So that's when I thought, okay, this only makes sense. It, it's expanding my curriculum. It's dynamic. It's exciting. And to create a ghost that flies in front of your haunted house was way more fun than that <laughs> static one that we had before. So that was my aha moment and I haven't gone back since. Awesome. And so uh, that was a great question. I never would have even thought about um, this Do Ink animation app. And so uh, you can learn and check out more at doink.com. I know I definitely will. That sounds so fun. Um, and interesting. So thank you for sharing. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. And I feel like that is everything for tonight. Those are all of the questions that I see. So one final time before we go, um, enter the giveaway, uh, a free ticket to the Teacher Heart Out and Teacher Goals virtual conference at bit.ly slash excited about Peter and Peter is all caps. And then also, if you want to grab your ticket, which includes like free books and 40 presentations, three keynotes, and just a whole lot of fun with us, you can get your ticket at teachergoals.com slash virtual dash conference. Once again, Trisha, I want to thank you so much for joining us. We had such a great time tonight. And I want to thank everyone who is taking time on their summer break. Or I've seen there are a few 
people that I know up north that are finishing up this week. So if it's your last week of school and you're about to start summer break, we just thank you for taking time to hang out with us. Know that you are appreciated and valued for all that you do and definitely get some rest this summer. Uh, be like Trisha, be like me, be like all of us and work towards uh, making your dreams come true. And most importantly, we're going to be here on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure to come hang out with us every week. You know, I love to see you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you. All righty. Have a good night, everyone.